Good afternoon, Andrew McColl here from Family Voice Australia. It's my pleasure today to welcome our guest, Dr. Terry Harding, to our Family Voice Zoom session today, dealing with the challenges facing Christian educators. Terry has been a communicator at Merry Conferences in homeschooling for over 25 years. He's been a homeschool principal and administrator and a researcher with an MED and a PhD, focusing on why parents chose to home educate and what are the roles of parents who do choose to home educate. Terry's been pivotal in establishing non-government distance education and has been an informer of state and federal departments as they develop policy for non-government distance education. Finally, Terry and his wife, Diane, homeschooled their five children for 15 years. Good afternoon, Terry. Hi, Andrew. Hi, everybody out there. Great to be with you today. Terry, you've had a career in education that covers many aspects. What was it that prompted you and Diane to begin homeschooling in 1986? Well, what a question. You're taking me back to last millennium, Andrew. Um, yep. Yep. But uh, I, uh, I became a Christian uh, in the 70s. Um, I was surfing over in New Zealand and, and I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ there. And I, I was there for two months, um, but I heard the gospel the first few days and I committed myself to Jesus and his way. And when I came back to Australia, um, I found a little Bible-believing church near my house. And, and so um, I started attending there. And they had just a, a small Christian school. And uh, this was all new to me because I was in the middle of doing a Bachelor of Arts at Sydney University. And I was intending to become a teacher. Uh, so I was really interested in this uh, novel form of um, church-based Christian education. So, and that was my local church. So that was really interesting. Um, and, and they were using at that church-based school, a Christian curriculum. And uh, it was the uh, ACE or Accelerated Christian Education curriculum. And uh, it impressed me as I looked through it and I saw the, the quality of the kids in the school and I thought there's something in this. And so um, later on, um, oh, I married uh, my girlfriend, Diane. And uh, as things happen, um, we had children. Uh, we currently have five children, four boys and a girl. But back then, our first child was uh, born to us and uh, in 79, 1979. And we determined very early in the piece to use Christian curriculum when it came to our first child's education. So I was very, very keen to follow this up. And uh, so um, uh, when our first son, Daniel, was ready to learn to read about the age of five, we used this Christian curriculum and, and we weren't near a school. And so we had to apply to gain access to this Christian curriculum, which conformed with our Christian beliefs uh, and use it at home in a home context. And uh, that's what got us started, Andrew. Wow. So when I first met you in Dubbo, not that many years later in 1995, mm. you were already involved in educational research for your master's degree then. So what was the outcome of that research? Wow. Well, that's really uh, an important thing. And I, I remember that meeting at Dubbo. I remember that very clearly. I remember one person who was a medical doctor standing up in that in that meeting and and she said i'm a medical doctor but the greatest thrill i've ever had in my life was when we were homeschooling and i actually taught my daughter to read right great. that was you remember that sandy gaffney yeah that's right <laughs> anyway to answer your question um uh yeah my uh, master's um dissertation was asking parents why they chose to homeschool so um, that was uh, completed in uh, 1979, and I did that at uh, Queensland University of Technology. And the reasons were uh, sixfold. Um, uh, the first one that came out with, obviously, with uh, among Christian people, it was uh, about religious reasons. People wanted to um, maintain 
the same religious beliefs, firstly, and values and practices in line with their beliefs and their children's education. And thus, they felt that homeschooling would be the way. So that's one first one. The second one was for academic reasons. People were choosing uh, to homeschool for, to, for academic reasons because they saw the need for their children to learn to read and to learn to be numerate or to count. And, and you only get one go at this. And so they said uh, in various stages of their children's education, you know, Johnny or Mary uh, was having difficulty or couldn't read well, et cetera, et cetera. And so they decided to take it on themselves. And we at ACHS, Australian Christian Homeschooling, had a curriculum that was structured and that the parents could follow that curriculum and would give a foundationally strong education in literacy, numeracy, as well as history, geography, and other subjects. So academic reasons was the second one. The third reason parents were choosing, and they were saying in this dissertation, we just want to be with our children. We want to grow up with them. And we don't really want to just, you know, um, pass them across to an institution, educational institution, or to strangers, or to philosophies or ideologies that we don't agree with, but we just want to live and be with our children and grow our relationships. So that was uh, another one. The fourth one was a big one. Fourth reason for choosing homeschooling was for social or socialization reasons. Yeah. And parents said they wanted to protect their children from negative peer influences, build the child's personal um, confidence, and uh, of course, uh, to, to grow them and shape their character in a way that was wholesome and respectful and uh, in accord with what we might call traditional Australian standards, which are based on Christianity. Uh, there were other pragmatic reasons for them to start. One was uh, we want to travel around Australia or too far to find a Christian school. So that was the fifth reason. And the last one was a big one. Um, uh, in those days, it wasn't as big, but I've just completed another study as to why people are choosing homeschooling. And, and this category in 2023 is much, much bigger uh, in that study as compared to my 1997 study. And that was the issue of my child's special needs. They could be special learning problems. They could be special psychological problems, physical problems. Um, and so uh, that that was uh, the sixth one back there in the um, 1997 analysis. There you go. Yeah. So looking back on those 15 years with your children at home, um, what was it like for you for you both, for, for, you know, for Diane and you to have them at home all those years, Terry? Yeah. Um, it's different levels. It varies. At the level of commitment, um, uh, we were a single income family, uh, and that's been the case largely for homeschooling families. And so that was an economic factor in that we were not like our next door neighbours who were dual income families. Um, so there was an economic factor there, but we basically said, look, whilst this costs, it, it pays far more than it costs. Right. But the second level was more about commitment. Um, uh, I had a nine to five job. And so I was not present in the home. Um, ironically, I, uh, supervising homeschooling nationwide, that was my job. Yeah. Um, but I made sure that I was injected as a man into the children's education um, before I go to work, when I came home, those sorts of things. And however, the major load was carried by my wife, Diane, and uh, it was full time for all those years. And uh, it, it was uh, from prep through, right through to year 12. So that was a time commitment um, that we, we did. Now that sounds arduous, but look, bottom line was it was a joy because uh, whilst people said, why did you start homeschooling? And our initial response was always, oh, we were Christians and we wanted a Christian type of curriculum and do it ourselves and, and that sort of thing. After doing homeschooling for about a year, we changed our answer to the why are you homeschooling? We said we're homeschooling now for relationship with our kids. We're just right. loving it. 
So, so there was the financial issue, there was the labor intensive issue, there was the importance of male and female input, the mum's input, the dad's input. And when I was working through, uh, so it, it, was a, it was good and it was tough and it delivered many joys. Good. That kind of leads on to what I wanted to ask you about the common concern, Terry, that you've heard for years and so have I about, oh, well, if you have your children at home, they, they won't learn social skills. Do children who are at home with their parents or with their siblings day in, day out, do they learn uh, those, those appropriate social skills or do they need to go to school for those sorts of things? Right. Well, yeah, um, people, especially when I was doing seminars all around Australia, um, people would challenge me and say, well, what about socialisation? So I would immediately push back and say, what do you mean by socialisation? And, and folk were really unable to, to really articulate what socialisation means. Right. So I started to give them, and I'm just going to see if I've got my notes here. Yeah, I, I'm start, I started to give them um, an academic definition of socialisation. And then I'll answer your question. It, um, uh, in the Encyclopedia of Social Psychology, it states uh, from Durkin's research, it's the process whereby people acquire the rules of behaviour and systems, beliefs and attitudes that equip a person to function effectively as a member of a particular society. And he goes on to say, uh, it's all about participating in the daily routines which immerse people directly in the values of their community. So people couldn't tell me what they meant by socialization. And so the other, the next, once I established that they really didn't know what they were saying, uh, I would then say, well, look, socialization uh, occurs initially in the family. And I find that's reinforced in the Bible, where the Bible has a lot to do with parenting. And so um, we, we saw the family as the platform for developing the social skills of our own children. Great, great. And then, then the whole point to being a child is to become an adult. So from that platform of, of, of the family to eventually move out into the adult world with yeah. the values that everyone expects of courtesy and reliability and and respect and tolerance, all these words we're hearing now. And the other thing too was uh, when people said, what about socialization? What they were implying without saying was that if to be socialized in their view was to attend school for 13 years with an age peer group. And I felt that that was quite a restrictive definition. Okay, fine. So, so the you know there are some other arguments too about. I mean, some folks do have some reservations about homeschooling in terms of it's it it the preparing a child for say tertiary studies. So, mm -hmm. if someone came to you and said, "Terry, well, look, hey, we are really serious about James and Susie getting into tertiary uh, study in years to come," what would you say about that? Well, I would let the data do the talking rather than personal opinions. And because we've been involved in home education for so long, since 1994, um, I was able to compile research which answered that question. And I've just made a few notes uh, for this afternoon's little talk here. And, and uh, so my research was showing, and, and I know you've done research as well, Andrew, uh, but my research of, I, I had 438 of Australian Christian homeschooling year 12 graduates, so the kids that have been homeschooled up to the year 12 level, uh, 438 of them responded to my question, tell us what happened after homeschooling. Right. And the response of those 438 uh, graduates was that 36% of them said, oh, we're in universities doing bachelor degrees. 21% said we're in TAFE college or university doing diplomas. And 43% were doing uh, apprenticeship and certificate studies. So my answer to that question was that homeschooling works and children have access to Australia's tertiary institutions nationwide. Right. So the fact that a child is homeschooled doesn't of itself preclude him or her from going to a, 
a, a, a, a tertiary institution. Certainly, certainly agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And my own children were the same. And, you know, anyway, I won't go any further on that one, but my own children all attended various institutions and uh, gained access and finished degrees and all of that. Some did masters. Yeah, good. So just speaking about your own children as we are now. So yeah. how did how do your children, Daniel, Josh, Esther, Joel and Nathan, kind of look back on those years of, of being home with uh, you and Diane? Yeah, well, I think I probably need to interview them at a greater depth, but um, <laughs> they certainly enjoyed the time, the freedom. Yeah. Uh, they had plenty of connection with uh, local sports, rugby league and uh, netball and uh, church and choir and chess club and um, and all that. But I think the, the, the greatest attraction for us was, as I said earlier, uh, our relationship, they are all good mates and they all still love their mum and dad and talk to us <laughs> and we, we love them. So um, it, it was really um, a joyful time and um, a very much a bonding time. Uh, and, and they would say the same. They would say the same. Right. Excellent. So, so someone comes to you, Terry, and says, look, Terry, I'm thinking, thinking about taking my children out of the school locally and, and homeschooling or they say look Johnny and Susie are, are uh, four and six we want to we're thinking about homeschooling and right from the get-go what would you what sort of tips would you recommend to them uh, look I, those sort of people I love I love with my heart and my head and um, I would applaud them for being different and being courageous I think that's amazing. It's wonderful, and 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 I would the first thing I'd say is fantastic. Go for it. The second thing I'd say is don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, we have this sort of mystique that you know you've got to have these degrees, and um, schooling is so complex. Uh, I've been principal of a number of schools as well, and yes, it is complex. But with the in the home, in the family home, things are organic. They are human. And they can they work well for big humans, the parents, and little humans. So the first thing I say, don't be scared, don't be afraid. Be positive about it. If you're a praying person, I'd be definitely, as I am, I no holy Joe, but I, I believe in God and follow Jesus. And so I'd be prayerful. So I'd, I'd say, you can pray, you can pray and seek God's guidance. Uh, you can seek help. You can seek help. It could be that you seek help from a group like us, who are Australian Christian homeschooling, and we provide two things. We provide a curriculum that's good and foundational and Christian, and that goes from foundation or prep right through to year 12. So you don't have to go and invent a learning program. So that's one thing. And the second thing that we do is provide educational services, which means we give the, the families a diagnostic test for their child and find out whether they're high or low in, in, in the different subjects like maths and English and reading. Um, and so, and we give them the curriculum that suits the child's learning standard, not their birth date. Uh, so we'd say, we'd say, but you can get help from other groups, uh, national groups like um, Home Education Australia, fantastic group. Uh, you can get, uh, you'll find in your region, if you get onto the internet, you'll find that there'll be little homeschool groups all around Australia. And uh, those groups uh, could be just general homeschool groups, or they could be homeschool activities just for art or for music or for uh, Christian groups or different religious groups. Uh, you, you, uh, the diversity is fantastic. And finally, I would say this as a final piece of advice is, uh, and this is especially to the mums, do not make a rod for your own back to beat yourself up with. You know, the, the mother, mothers who homeschool are so um, concerned that they do everything well and right. Um, uh, so they often say, oh, Terry, I'm worried that, you know, Mary's or Freddie's behind. And I say, behind what? You know, just relax, take it easy. And just wherever Freddie or Mary is at academically, just proceed slowly. And if you have a bad day, guess what? You can close the books and go out and enjoy the fresh air. Tomorrow will come. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Well, and and then there'd be some mothers who would say, well, Terry, you and Diane are tertiary educated people. You've got a string of qualifications after your name. I I only finished my education at year 10. I don't know that I've got what it takes. Mm. What would you say to that, that, that kind of a lady say? Yeah, yeah. look, all I'd say is, um, and Diane and I were, were able to create our own curriculum. We yeah. could write it ourselves, as you say, Andrew. Um, and we the, that was the last thing we wanted to do. We didn't want to deal with things like curriculum and those sorts of things. We, we just found something that was written by experts. Now, we could have done that ourselves, but it's a waste of time. We wanted to pour our life into our children and our activities, et cetera. So, you know, um, we, in Australian Christian homeschooling, we've got lots of families who are not tertiary qualified. They don't need to be because we have curriculum that the teacher's written into the document, or into the little booklets. And so you don't need to have a uh, degree or a diploma or whatever. Um, uh, and so, you can you can do it. The key is to just be committed and going for it. Right. So just moving on, we talked earlier about your master's work back in the in, in the nineties, and you've, you've you've now completed your doctorate. What were you considering, Terry, with that, and 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 what conclusions did the evidence drive you to? Sure. Well, initially, I was going to try and do a PhD in. Um, in curriculum, in homeschooling curriculum. But in the end, I just felt the Lord leading me to look at, uh, rather than curriculum, to look at the roles of the parents. Right. So the data was uh, very clear that the roles of the parents in homeschooling were fourfold. There were four of them. Firstly, uh, the homeschooling parent is a learner. I am a learner. Now, what does that mean? It means if I want to start at homeschooling, ultimately, I'm going to have to learn a bit about education. Oh, I'm going to have to learn a little bit about homeschooling. Find out what's on the internet, what's there, who's around, who can help us, etc. But most importantly, and this came out in the research, um, the parents who responded to my question said, I am learning about my child lovely the bible says to study uh, your own child even a child's ways are known by his doings and so we study our children you know you know freddie is sporty you know uh, mary's an it kind of girl you know wh whatever gifts and talents god's put into your child to study your child and to then um facilitate help them even connect them we had one child who was really sporty and we connected them with a professional sporting group. We had one child who was IT. And so we connected that child with um, a professional um, electric engineer for a half day on Thursdays. So you study your child. The second, the second um, category, so the first was I'm a learner. The second one is I'm a partner. Now, the partner was for like married couples, you know, husband and wife, and, and they take the roles that are required. You know, like the dad was kind of like the principal, the mum was kind of like the, 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 the teacher and the canteen person and all of that. And, um, but then we also have lots of single parent families. And, 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 and does that mean they can't homeschool? No, no. We have lots of them, and I call them the champion educators of Australia in that they are able to home educate their kids and connect with different people, sporting coaches, uh, youth leaders at church, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's a matter of partnering within your family, your, your marriage, your spouse, your partner, and secondly, partnering externally to your community to meet needs. The third, the third uh, area of what are the roles of home educators was I'm a teacher. Well, that's obvious. We'll leave that one. You, you, you can make of that what you will. And the fourth and final one was I'm a pioneer. What does that mean? Yeah, okay, homeschooling's new. Well, no, it's not really. It, was, uh, it commenced in Australia in 1788. That's another, it's a historical story I won't go into. But I'm a pioneer means this. They were saying, I am reconceptualizing or reframing the idea of family. 
family is an educational institution. Yeah. And secondly, I'm reframing the idea of education. Education is a family-based activity. So um, I, I find the importance of education, and it, there are many definitions, but I love uh, the idea that education is a place, it's an activity, it's an experience where a person uh, receives wisdom and virtue. Wisdom right. and virtue. Right. Yeah. And uh, there's another famous quote, which again aligns with homeschooling, which is uh, education is life. The communication of life from the living to the living. Excellent. Bill okay. fits that bill. Yeah, good. So you've now worked in different educational settings for children in homeschooling, distance ed, and what we would commonly call bricks and mortar schools. Mm. What do they offer each family, Terry? And how do these methods stack up with each other? Wow, big question. Big question. I made a few notes to see if I can find them. Um, but largely, a school, uh, and Australia has a tremendous schooling system. Definitely as homeschoolers, we are not anti-school. However, there are options apart from school. But a school is a place where you, it's a safe place, or it should be a safe place for learning. And so you can put your child in the school. It's very structured. It's, it's very bound. Uh, it's a safe place place for learning it, it has christian teachers hopefully and it's a structured process that can be trusted if it's working well and uh many homeschoolers in my 2023 research uh have found that that was not the case but that but a good school is a good place and it provides that security distance education um it has many of the benefits of a school um, and, 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 and the big feature there is that a distance education family can do the academics at home in that home setting, which is great. Plenty of warmth and love and, and positivity. Homeschooling is vastly different from the two. Uh, it's conducted in the home, but Distance education means that the child is locked into the school curriculum, whatever it may be. And secondly, in distance education, the child is locked into the school time frame. When do I get my assignments? When do I have to have them in? Um, this is the end of the term or this is the end of the week and oh, I've got to have an essay and it must be done in three days time. All those things are non-negotiable. So you, you're locked into that tight structure. Jumping back to homeschooling, you can get quality education, but a flexible time frame. Um, and that's good. Um, but here is the big beauty uh, and it comes out in my 2023 research. Children are safe from the temporary fads and ideologies of governance. Now, let that sink in. You're safe from Marxism. You are safe from atheism. You are safe from crazy ideas that make no scientific sense. Uh, and, 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 and the opposite side of that coin is that in a homeschooling family, the children us uh, to uh, they will learn the van the beliefs first, the values and the behaviours of their parents. Right. So it's a joyful difference. So there are three different modalities of education on the Australian educational lands landscape. So you're really saying that the that the parent is not just an educator; he's he or she is is a part of the child's curriculum. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Couldn't put it better myself. They're part of the curriculum. Yeah. 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 So getting on to this issue about, you know, challenges facing Christian educators, and, and, and that includes Christian parents. Yeah. What we've noticed over the years, and, 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 you know, you've already alluded to this just a few moments ago, is that the whole environment of, 
of education today has changed, say from 25 or 30 years ago, what are some of those challenges that, that people are facing today and, and how can families cope with them successfully? Well, how long have we got? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, in today, there are 4 million and 42,512 students in school. And that means nearly 10,000 schools, right? Yeah. Um, we are told by the Australian Bureau of Statistics that the uh, pupil to teacher relationship is 13 to one. Now the schools where I've taught in and been principal of, it wasn't the case um, much more. But nonetheless, um, that's that's the cohort we're dealing with, you know, four million children. Yeah. Uh, now, Julia Gillard, our prime minister, before she was prime minister, she lobbied under Kevin Rudd to produce an Australian curriculum. We call it ACARA or the Australian curriculum. And that was done, um, I was at 2013, I think, from memory. Anyway, um, what we've found is that since then, education has declined. Now, Julia Gillard promised the Australian electorate that by the year, and I'm going to quote here, by the year 2025, Australia was to be one of the top five global schooling systems because of this introduction of the Australian curriculum. Now, Andrew, we're now up to version nine of that curriculum. Okay, so they've changed it nine right. times. Okay, is it delivering? And uh, I'll now quickly just run through some stats to back up rather than me just give little opinions because um, so uh, ACARA is not delivering in the way that Julia Gillard promised us. Uh, for example, year nine teenagers, year nine teens are writing, many of them writing uh, at year three punctuation level and primary school writing levels. Um, I, Australia has dropped in terms of the international standards now, that's not, not NAPLAN. This is now international comparisons. We've dropped from 11th to 29th in maths. And that's over a short period since 2018. Sorry, from 2011 to 2018. Uh, we've dropped from 8th to 16th in science, 4th to 16th in literacy. One in five of our teenagers are showing, are performing at the lowest proficiency in writing. And only 60% in going back to NAPLAN, only 60% of Australian year nine kids are performing at a proficiency or better level. So it's, it's a bit of a dismal report and contrary to what Julia promised us, but that's not all. That's just the academic side of things. And we found in ACHS, people are jumping into homeschooling because their children are not where the parents think they need to be in terms of literacy and numeracy. But let's look at this national curriculum and its contents. It's, it's full of identity politics. It's critical race theory is replete right through it. Is radical green ideology being just forced upon our children because every school has to comply with uh, an aspect of the Australian curriculum, which is called cross-curriculum priorities. Now, those cross-curriculum priorities uh, are largely just leftist indoctrination, um, are trying to turn their kids into climate change activists and social uh, justice warriors. And this, instead of giving our children in Australia a, um, a sound education where they can think. So, uh, and of course, the other thing I just, I have here, is written down is uh, the sexual confusion and also more than that the promiscuity that is encouraged now uh, so there are issues where um, uh, uh, you know parents don't want that sort of thing foisted some might want it but others don't there's another thing a rejection of our culture rejection of the western civilization saying that, oh, look, you're all white male privileges, privileged people or you're um, 
you know, you should be a global citizen rather than proud of your, your country and what God's done in the country. And there are historically, there are problems that we've seen historically, and there are blessings that we've experienced to bring us here to 2023. Um, so there's a problem of eliminating history against our history. There's materialism thrown in. There's um, a, a sense that there is atheism, that there is no God. And maybe if you think there is a God, you're probably him. Uh, and on and on it goes. Rejection of the idea of truth, rejection of um, uh, uh, of, of other ideas, no free, for, free thought. I'm sorry for being so negative, but these are real factors. And the one thing to bring to our attention, uh, this and this is now April 2023, our Senate is currently looking at the problem of violence in the classroom. Do you believe that? That the violence in the classroom is so rampant, not just student to student, but student to teacher. Yeah. Um, uh, so that, that's there. And it's, it's, so, it's so extant that the Senate is currently looking into that as an issue. So there you go. That, there are some of the things to deal with as Christians. Now, how do you deal with it? That's Andrew's question. And the answer is, if your child's in school, well, we're not against school. But if your child's in school, you need to be really communicating with your child as to, honey, what had happened today? What happened in the school? How did you go? Et, et cetera. And uh, dealing with it in whatever way you can. Right. Okay. <clears throat> just before we go to the next question, on a couple of questions, Terry, I'll just mention to our viewers that if they have a, a, a question for you themselves, they can be typing that in right now. We'll be coming to them in a, in a few moments for those questions. I've just got a couple more to run by you, and then we can turn it over to my colleague, Peter, who's going to be handling some questions. So you know, looking back, Terry, on what you've done in your various roles in education, uh, you, you started homeschooling as you did in the, in the 80s. Looking back, would, would you choose to go to that today or would you go to a distant education format or would you maybe go to something different? Look, Looking back at where we were at as young Christian parents, we were so excited to find that we were able to be free um, to choose the way of what influenced our children and what was going to shape their characters in their life. So we would continue in the same way. We'd keep, we would go into homeschooling um, and, and uh, yeah, I don't think we would ever change that, Andrew. Right. Okay. Great. So, so just um, my first question that I've got from one of our viewers is asking you, what, what do you think is God's plan for the education of children? Sure. Well, as I said earlier, um, it's to get wisdom. The book of Proverbs says that. And, uh, and to, in the process of gaining wisdom, to uh, develop virtue or a moral code, a compass by which to live life. Yep. So from my point of view as a Christian, uh, I would be encouraging uh, my child uh, to, um, because every child has, has a spirit, has spiritual beings. They're not just lumps of flesh and bone. Uh, I'd encourage them to grow spiritually. I'd encourage them to grow their knowledge base. That's the get wisdom. And I'd be encouraging them the way of living. The third thing, which is um, that's that's the morality and virtue of uh, and and Christianity provides the three of those. And so uh, for me, whether the child's six or sixteen, that's the way to go. And in the process, I would be hoping and praying that my child would develop a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, uh, because that's that just opens up the pathway to spiritual, cognitive, physical, uh, social development in a way that nothing else can. Great, great. Thank you. Well, that's, that's, that's helpful. So, Peter, my colleague, you've got some questions I, I gather coming into you from our viewers to our, our 
our session this afternoon. What have you got for us there, Peter? I've got a few. Uh, the first one I'd like to do with, I tried to answer and wasn't successful. Uh, it said, will we have access to the recording to sh share uh, with our church leaders and parents interested in homeschooling? And the answer is yes. Around about a week after the webinar, we'll have that up in our online library. So you go to familyvoice.org.au, online library, and uh, look under webinars and it'll it'll be there. Um, so the first one I have here is what role did church life play in the socialization of your children? After all, school and family are not the only places where socialization occurs. Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, socialization, the foundation is the family right from the, the very start of life. But the process is expansive and um, I would encourage people to join a church where the Bible's taught and the, where everyone, parents and children, can learn the Bible. But that's critical to know what's in the Bible. Um, so what the, answering the, uh, the viewer's question, um, our church played a very important part. Um, we, were, we would have normal Sunday services and we would also do a young adults Bible study in our home and our kids just latched onto that. Uh, we, in the church, um, they weren't too sure about us homeschoolers. What well, is a bit weird, but um, one thing that they did love was my wife would go to the Thursday morning craft time and she, as a homeschooler, she had to bring her kids with her too. And our church really appreciated that our kids were able to help with the babysitting. So whilst they were not sure about this homeschooling idea, um, they really appreciated that um, Di brought a, a, a crew, a troop along to assist. And that was impressive. The church that we went to, we, we Di and I, as Christians, we could um, feed ourselves spiritually anywhere. But when we moved to Brisbane, we looked for a church which uh, would have young people that the ki my kids could look up to, um, so they weren't too worldly. That they were just they're not perfect. We know that, but to just have a spiritually focused group of young people, to be in a church uh, where activities were fun and that where the kids wanted to go to church. Where they wanted to go to church. So whether they're playing rugby league out in the backyard, or out in the back yard after church or uh enjoying a youth night we had we had uh boys and girls rally on fridays and we had uh, a very successful choir uh young people's choir youth choir that started to travel around the state uh so the kids love being in that as well so whatever happens uh, church is critical jesus didn't leave anything else on the planet apart from his church for social nurture. So yeah, the church was very integral uh, right through uh, the time of our raising our kids till they got married and after they got married. Uh, thank you, Terry. Another question, uh, would it be worth pursuing the idea of teachers in state schools uh, being in loco parentis again? I'm not sure what they mean. Do they mean... Oh, the, the, the teacher in a state school takes on the role of in loco parentis. Yeah, so in the place of the parents, but the parents are still in, in control. Of the oh, way. I see. Okay, well, uh, they are in the place of parents because a uh, parent has delegated the child to the care of the school or to the Minister of Education in the various state or territory. Um, it would, I think maybe what's behind the question is to say, would it not be better for the the school, the principal and heads of department and teachers to be aware uh, that the parent is the primary educator and, and, and that that needs to be respected and not overruled, not um, and parents not to be kept out of uh, critical decisions such as, uh, you know, when a child says, I think I'm of a different gender, those sorts of things, such that's all that's hidden from parents in many schools. So I think that's what, what the, the questioner is asking. And I think the answer is, 
yes, the teacher needs to be aware that they have to be in harmony with the parent if the parent's requirements are reasonable and logical. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Um, this is one's a bit specific. It says, what happens if you have a child that doesn't share much? <laughs> well, that's going to happen whether they're at school or not. And that's a really good question. Thanks for that one. Um, and, and it can be, uh, I've had this question in many different formats. One is, oh, I've got a bad relationship with my child. I can never homeschool. Or my kids are very selfish and they don't share much. Uh, well, welcome to the real world. Um, but whether your child is homeschooled or whether your child is at school, um, their character is still there. So in this very good example, it seems to me that the family is saying, or the mum or dad saying, um, you know, my child won't share with their siblings or won't share with other people. That needs to be developed. So two areas. One would be the theoretical area, which would be teaching about sharing kindness, uh, love and true respect uh, for people. Now, that's a theoretical thing, which you can just talk about, read from your little family Bible study, et cetera. And then on the practical side, I think there would need to be, this is kind of getting into a, a um, sort of like a counseling thing, but I think I would be training because the Bible says to train your child. So it's like a behavioral thing. I would be saying, well, let's see if we can, maybe you buy uh, something and it's too much for the one child with the view as a wise parent, this child could give it to their sister and, and, and set things up to help them to develop. You can give that to your sister. And once it's done, to praise the child and say, this is the right thing to do. So there's the theoretical, the teaching, the talking, the example. Um, Mum and dad need to be generous. But then there's the, um, the practical, which is like giving them experiences where they can share and it doesn't hurt them. There could be a reason, a real specific reason within their child's heart why they don't share. They might feel insecure. Anyway, this is not a counselling session, but there's some thoughts. Uh, thank you, Terry. Another question. Uh, is it not true that homeschooling parents are obliged to follow the national curriculum? No, it's not true. Um, and the example I can give you is... Um, with regard to families that do choose to register their children with their state or territory um, educational authority. Now, each of those educational authorities are under the education department of that particular state or territory. Some of them do, like New South Wales. Uh, so if you're in New South Wales, yes, they... Well, New South Wales, as we all know, joking, um, they think they're Australian. And so when it comes to the Australian curriculum, New South Wales says, um, we're better than that. Our schools and our homeschoolers don't have to go with the Australian curriculum. They have to go for the Australian curriculum for New South Wales. So they, they just want to do it differently. So to answer, Peter, that question, uh, yeah, it needs to, you need to show that you are complying with the uh, curriculum. Uh, but to cover, does that mean they have to cover some of those horrendous things that I mentioned earlier? No, you can work around it and still show that you're complying basically with what's in the curriculum. But my initial answer to your question was no. For example, uh, let's take New South Wales book to one side. Victoria, if you're in Victoria, the VRQA is the registration uh, group there, uh, they're under the education department, and they have no requirement to be um, uh, for homeschool kids to be doing the state curriculum or the national curriculum. It's in writing. So it, it varies from state to state, but largely, um, and, and WA is a little bit more tighter on some of those issues. But let me let me put it this way. And there's no offence to different forms of homeschooling because we're, we're structured in our approach. Um, there are so many uh, natural learner approaches where 
there where it's child directed learning that um, that's accepted and registered in all states and territories. So sometimes uh, those families that register as natural learners or unschoolers, um, they can show that they're compliant with various requirements, but in a total non-schooling format. Now, the Australian curriculum was written for schools, for education in groups called class, classes in classroom. Sorry, so it's so the answer to your question is uh, no plus yes. In some places, there is a little bit of conformity, but homeschoolers are able to drive their own agenda and not have to embrace some of these horrendous things that are uh, written as cross-curriculum uh, priorities um, uh, in, their, in their approach to homeschooling. It's a bit of a mixed answer, that one. Sorry about that. That uh, question you really can drive it yourself. For, for Terry about the, you know, the in loco parentis idea, that's, that's come under fairly sharp relief just in the last little while because it used to be that the teacher was in loco parentis for the, for the parent that is standing in the place of the parent. But that is coming into sharp relief. Well, one of the reasons is we've now got children who are saying to their, to their school, I, I identify as a boy or I identify as a girl, but don't tell mum and dad that. So, and, and now the education department in Queensland is saying, or the staff are saying, we work for the education department, meaning they are inferring that, you know, that in loco parentis has gone out the window. Yeah, and in Victoria, um, to step in to that discussion in any way uh, is actually a crime. So it's, it's, a, it's a critical factor. And with respect to my research 2023, parents were very critical of the, that secrecy uh, and the um, inputting of um, bad ideologies and, and, and fads and philosophies into children, keeping it secret from parents. Uh, so... Yeah, this is a growing problem. And I will just quote a, a number here. Um, um, Kevin Donnelly, uh, Dr. Donnelly, a, a very well-respected educator uh, nationally. He said that um, numerous surveys show one of the reasons enrolments in Catholic, independent and Christian schools are outstripping government schools it, by an increase of 16.4% right now, instead of 1.9% over the last five years. Uh, what he's saying there, and this is with respect to private schools, he's saying parents are jumping out of these over state schools that are pushing uh, the woke and progressive agenda, jumping into um, private schooling because of these very issues. And it does have the ministers for education, even our own Queensland minister has asked the question, why is there such an exodus from the state schooling into homes, into um, uh, uh, private schooling? And conversely, why are they also jumping into homeschooling? Well, what are they afraid of? The answer is plain and, and easy to see. Yep, yep. Thank you, Terry. Uh, another question, what suggestions does Terry offer for improving the Australian curriculum? Uh, don't take this one lightly. I think it's very difficult to do that. I would say dump it and start again. I'm, I'm, I understand the importance in, in schooling um, uh, to have a consistency, um, but I would be looking for something that will promote knowledge, wisdom, and virtue. Um, one of my critiques of the Australian curriculum, when they asked for critique, and this is going back oh, a long time ago, probably 2014 or so, was uh, when I commented on the um, 
HSIE, the social studies, the history, the um, um, uh, all the personal and um, humanities side of uh, the subjects, um, was that the word kindness, the Christian word kind and kindness, and the Christian word love was not even mentioned in the curriculum documents that were supposed to be all about the social side of living. Um, so I, my feeling would be start, drop it and start again. But then the big question arises, Peter, um, who is qualified to write it? Do, do you want more of these people that are infatuated with uh, ideologies that are uh, not natural, they're not traditional, it, you know, they're bringing in all these fancy and, and short-lived nonsensical philosophies. You want people like that to write it again? So who's qualified? I mean, you need wise people uh, and uh, to, to write it again. So that would be my answer to that question, because that's what I honestly believe. However, of course, that's probably not going to happen. How do you tidy it up? I will look at these cross-curriculum uh, priorities, and I would review that, probably rec just re take them out. And if they want a cross-curriculum priority, uh, have more sensible ones. But, uh, and the other thing that's needed is, is, is the, the teaching of explicit literacy and explicit numeracy. That's starting to creep back in, which is positive. The word phonics is now back in the Australian curriculum after 50, oh no, probably 40 years of ridicule. So yeah, you could perhaps fix some of it, but the philosophical fads and the inclusivity and those other um, woke progressive um, ideologies um, are not gonna help kids. Thank you. Uh, Terry, in the interest of time, probably one last que quick question. As a family that chooses to send our kids to a Christian school, how do we fight against and stand up against the cross-curriculum priorities such as gender confusion and sexual conversations? I think the answer is um, to firstly really know what your belief is, know it really properly and well, write it down, put it into three to four bullet points, and then ask for a meeting with your principal and say, this is what I, I think is could be happening in the school. Is that true? And secondly, this is what I think should be happening. And I'd be taking it to the boss. Firstly, uh, I'd be having similar conversations in a relaxed manner with the teachers. But um, yeah, you've got, to, you've got to take it to the principal. And of course, the principal's authority over him or her is the school board. Bring it to their attention. Time to stand in love and kindness, not in arrogance and um, uh, yeah, not in arrogance and frivolity, but in true concern. Thank you, Terry. Look, thank you, Terry, for our Zoom session with you today. We've been instructed, we've been encouraged, we've been uh, taught by someone who knows his stuff, who, who has had broad experience with education in Australia. And we're so grateful for what you've shared with us today. And we uh, trust you can go on to bigger and brighter things with your career and, and probably even more importantly with your family in terms of their education. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you, Peter. It's been really lovely. And if anyone wants to call us or go to the website for Australian Christian Homeschooling, we are more than happy to chat through with you your child's educational needs. So God bless and uh, thank you, Peter and Andrew. Thank you.